Hi guys, welcome to this video looking at why simple covalent compounds do not conduct electricity. Now, before we get on to explaining the property, it's really important for you guys to know what type of bonding you've got. In the exam, they won't turn around to you and say you've got ionic bonding or metallic bonding. They will give you the name of a chemical most likely and ask you to explain why it has a high melting point, why it doesn't conduct, why it does conduct, and so on. So you've got to be able to work out what type of bonding is going on to then work out the properties to then be able to explain it. So if we start off with how to work out whether something is covalent or not, nice and simply, if it's covalent, it is only made up of non-metals. So for example, if I have a look through this list of different chemicals, all I have to do is find out my non-metals. Remember, the non-metals are on the right in the periodic table, with hydrogen being my exception. Fe, that's a metal, that's iron. So straight away, I can rule that out, that is not covalent. NH3, nitrogen, that's a non-metal, it's on the right. Hydrogen, that's a non-metal. So I know NH3 is covalent. PbBr2, Pb is a metal, so it's not covalent. CH4, carbon is a non-metal, Hydrogen is a non-metal, so I've got a covalent compound. Diamond and graphite are both allotropes of carbon. So they are things that are made up of carbon but have different structures. So if they're made up of carbon, which is a non-metal, they are both covalent. So how do I then work out whether I've got simple or giant covalent? Nice and simply, if it's simple covalent, it's got fewer atoms. So for example, water has only got three atoms, two hydrogen and one oxygen. Buckminster Fullerene has got 60 carbon atoms. It's got a set amount. However, my giant covalent ones has got many atoms. So diamond, graphite, graphene, and nanotubes, they're the main ones you need to know. They can go on for thousands and thousands of carbon atoms. So usually, if it's got a certain number of atoms, it's simple covalent. If it's got thousands of them, like those four examples, it's giant covalent. So we go back to my examples. NH3, I've got four atoms, therefore it's simple covalent. CH4, I've got five atoms, so it's simple covalent. Diamond is giant covalent, it's one of the examples we've just been through. And the same with graphite, giant covalent. Okay, now I know how to work out whether I've got simple covalent or not, I need to remember the properties. Nice and simply, anything that's simple covalent will have a low melting point. It's the only type of bonding that has a low melting point. Also, all covalent compounds do not conduct electricity. There are a few exceptions, but not for simple covalent. So let's get back to the point of this video. Why do simple covalent compounds not conduct electricity at all? Let's have a look. We have pairs of electrons and we have shared pairs of electrons. There are no spare electrons there, no delocalized electrons. There's no charged particles that can move. So there's nothing to carry a charge. So you get one mark for saying there are no spare or delocalized electrons, and one mark for saying nothing can carry a charge. Right, let's see what the examiner can ask you. I've got two questions. The first one being, identify the simple covalent substance from the list on the right, so you've got water, magnesium hydroxide, aluminium, and graphene. Which one of those only contains non-metals and only has a few atoms involved? That's your simple covalent. Question two, explain why carbon dioxide cannot conduct electricity. Again, we've just talked about that in the video. Hopefully it's fairly straightforward. Have a go, we'll see how you've done in a minute. Okay, let's go through. So the first question, which one is my simple covalent? Well, the only covalent ones there, the only ones with non-metals are water and graphene. Hopefully you can remember graphene has thousands of carbon atoms, therefore it's water, H2O. Question two, explain why carbon dioxide cannot conduct electricity. It's all to do with those electrons. So there are no spare electrons or no delocalized electrons gets you the first mark. Second mark, there is nothing to carry or pass on a charge. And that really is it for this video. I have got a review question for you, which if you want to attempt, put it in the comments. I'll let you know if you're right. That is, many people incorrectly believe that water conducts electricity. Explain why pure water does not conduct electricity. That brings this video to an end. 
Hi guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please click on like down below. You can also subscribe to my channel, you can check out the latest video, and you can visit my website up above here. Bye now.